Ladies and gents, welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, I'm very honored to have with me Russ, and say your last name. My last name is Briault. Briault. So we just met, and Russ has given a presentation on the Shroud of Turin, which we have a, a pictorial representation of here. Actual size done by Barry Schwartz, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. Yeah. Now, Russ, you've been on Discovery Channel, CBS, Good Morning America, talking about this image, most of my friends and many of my friends are atheists, so they think that this is like, you know, the Blessed Mother appearing on a tortilla sure. or something. So what makes this image different? Well, what makes it different is that it's the most analyzed artifact in the world. You have it in um, 1978, you had a team of 40 American scientists go to Turin. Um, and they span the range from agnostic, atheist, Jewish, Protestant, Catholic, a very eclectic bunch, and to go study one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of all time. Now, if I understand this right, when you say most studied, we're talking about not somebody's uncle. We're talking about peer-reviewed scientific journals exactly. that people can reference and find. This exactly. is one of the most studied articles or exactly. artifacts by science. Exactly. The, uh, the results of the Shroud Project um, have been published in 28 different peer-reviewed journal articles. That's pretty impressive. And it's, um, and so it's, this is not, you know, so it was, uh, you know, you know top flight science. And, uh, and they weren't there to prove the shroud to be authentic. They went over there just to investigate what is the cause of this image. And it's, um, okay. and, they, and they came away saying, realizing that there's that there's no visible trace of any kind of paint ink dye pigmentation or stain there's no artistic substances on the cloth to account for the image you have a whole pattern of blood stains and it's not paint it's blood in fact it's blood from actual wounds a b a b a b blood type is uh, human male dna and so billy rubin and is it correct that the billy rubin shows stress that's happened yeah. um yep. some sort of violence one of the re you know the the, the blood on the shroud still has a reddish tint. Uh, you know, most old blood be, just turns black, but the blood on the shroud still has a reddish tint because of the bilirubin. It was in the blood that is an enzyme that is released during during high stress, and it would uh, and that would that, that would give it that reddish tint. Well, folks, we don't. You, you've already given a long presentation today, and we don't want to take much more of the time. I'm doing this video to mainly just. I've studied this. Uh, I'm not an expert as as Russ is, but if they wanted to find out more information, what is your website? How can they find well, out more? The best way is just besides go just searching Shroud and Torrent <laughs> on YouTube. You can always do that. Uh, my website is shroudencounter.com. And they, they can also look at my Facebook page, which is uh, forward, you know, Facebook forward slash Shroud Encounter. And um, I have a fair amount of stuff on YouTube as well. And, um, but um, the... Um, well, just one quick question uh, before I wrap it up, because this is the amazing thing to me. If I understand it correctly, what they found in 78 and perhaps subsequently, I don't know, is that the image is produced by microfibers in this linen, that is in some way, we wouldn't use the word burned, but on a microscopic level has been shaved off. I don't know how. It well, the best chemistry is that what we see on the, 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 the chemical attribute of the image is that something has caused the accelerated dehydration and oxidation of the cellulose fibers, but only in those areas immediately surrounding the body. So in other words, the shroud is made out of flax. Flax is 100% cellulose, 90% water. Something caused caused the 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 flax to, to dry out and oxidize, but only in those areas immediately surrounding the body. It's not the result of any artistic substances on the cloth. And the other thing is, in terms of attributes, you have to realize that this image is uniform in intensity, top to bottom, front to back. It penetrates and affects only the top one to two microfibers. Each individual thread is made up of about 200 microfibers. So that means this image resides on about 1% of a single thread. <laughs> of a single thread. Right. And the fact that it, and, 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 and why does it look so, so much better in a photo negative than it does on the cloth itself? Um, and that was, that was only discovered in 1898. So that 
aspect of the shroud being, what, what it means is that the image that is on the cloth here is actually a negative image. Because what shows up in a photo negative this is This is that, like a photographic negative? Yes. So here's the head, here's the body. This is, we're getting into the dorsal image and the back of the head? Yes, mm -hmm. okay. exactly. And that's a photographic negative. And why was it, why was it discovered in 1870? Because that's when it was photographed for the very first time. And when, and when the photographer uh, used, used the ancient box cameras at that time, mm -hmm. when he was pulling the, the photo negative out of the developer solution, that's what he used to film, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden this, this amazing photo negative image was much clearer. And it's, um, so, so anyways. Photo negative <clears throat> was a positive. Exactly. Which means this is, is a negative. negative. Exactly. So, which begs the question then is, is, if the shroud is nothing more than the work of a medieval artist, then the fact that you know what what shows up in a photo negative is just a merely and just an accidental byproduct because he would have had no knowledge of, of negativity the whole concept of negativity wasn't even understood until there was photography which was invented in 1830 um, so you know which is 500 years after it arrived in in um, in france and before that it was in constantinople and um, so there is a um, there was, a, there was a clear historical trail date, uh, dating all the way back to the 6th century. Well, the curious thing to me, besides the obvious religious implications and historic implications, is how do you shave off little fibers of thread, pull back from it, and it creates an image? I, I, would, I would find it difficult for someone to do that nowadays, much less... No, it's, it's you a, said when you get closer to the image, the image goes away. It disappears. Which is different than most art. Most art, when you get closer, you can see it better. But because it's done on microfibers, you have to withdraw. And it's exceedingly faint. And so um, yeah, you have to stand back six to eight feet in order to see the image. Um, so it, it's, just, it's just a profound mystery. And, 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 and we still, and, 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 and to this day, it remains an unsolved this, which is really kind of you know intriguing because I mean here we are in the 21st century and, and you'd think that that you know if this was the obvious work of an artist we yeah. should have figured that scientists out. scientists could just wipe their hands of it and yeah yeah there's the there's the paint let's go yeah you know and it's uh, you know but it's it's just nearly it's not nearly that easy and um, so. well all of life's a mystery but it's no mystery you need to get some lunch yeah appreciate it <laughs> thank appreciate you very much time. thank you very appreciate much it. and thanks guys don't forget to like and subscribe look through my other videos appreciate it thank you